In this video, we are going to discuss a topic, what are gene cloning vectors? A cloning vector is any DNA molecule that has the ability to replicate inside the host to which the desired gene has integrated for cloning. Cloning vectors includes, include plasmids, bacteriophages, lambda phage vectors, M13 vectors, cosmids, PAC, YAC, shuttle vectors, etc. Now let us move into the details of a cloning vector. Let us take an example, an ideal vector that is PPR322, plasmid, polymer and rotrix 322. The essential, three essential characters for a vector, vector for a vector are an origin of replication, you can see right here, then many unique restriction sites within selectable marker regions and at least two selectable markers. Now let us move into the detail. Why we need an ORI, origin of replication? So usually our host is bacteria. We can see the genomic DNA, bacterial DNA right here. So we are introducing our vector by transformation. So an ORI, origin of replication are sequences that are required for replication of this vector inside the host. Now the second part that is the unique restriction sites. In PBR322 vector, there are four unique restriction sites, BAM1, SAL1, then PBU1 and PSD1. What is it for? So let us take this as an example. Here we are going to introduce our chain of interest into the BAM H1 restriction site. So we are making a cut using BAM H1 restriction enzyme and we are introducing our gene of interest there. So restriction sites are sequences where specific restriction enzymes can make a cut so that our gene of interest can be incorporated into the vector. Now the third thing that is the selectable markers. In PBR322 there are two selectable markers. You can see right here this is a tetracycline resistance region. This region has genes responsible for providing them with resistant to resistant to antibiotic tetracycline. So you can see the second marker that is ampicillin resistant region. This region has genes providing resistance against ampicillin. A host carrying this vector can grow in ampicillin containing medium. Now, after transformation, we will be getting three types of colonies non-transformed without our vector majority of the colonies will be non-transformed without our vector then transformed with non-recombinant vector our gene of insert may not be integrated into the vector and the third class that is transformed with recombinant vector or transformed the one which is having our gene of interest incorporated Now how we select our recombinant ones from all these colonies? Here comes the use of selectable marker. So now we know that non-transformed one cannot grow on ampicillin or tetracycline medium as that host or bacteria doesn't have ampicillin or tetracycline resistance genes. So we are simply plating that into an ampicillin or tetracycline medium so that that colonies cannot grow. Now the second category that is transformed with non-recombinant vector. Transformed ones with non-recombinant vectors have both ampicillin and tetracycline region so that it can grow 
in at both ampicillin and tetracycline containing medium. So it will form colonies right here. Then the third category, third type of colonies that is transformed with recombinant vector or gene of interest is inserted. So we need to pick out these colonies. So growing such colonies on ampicillin or tetracycline medium, the result is in this example we have incorporated our gene of interest in PAM H1 tetracycline region site. So a transform with recombinant vector carrying our gene of interest in this so uh, if the gene insert has integrated properly the tetracycline region gene is now more functioning of under products insertion inactivation thus our transformed recombinants can grow only in ampicillin medium and cannot grow on tetracycline medium due to insertion of inactivation so recombinant can colonies can be easily selected from the master plate by comparing these recombinant colonies can be selected Hope everything is clear.